Well, good morning, everybody. So good to see, just so you know, I'm 46 years old, and that's just, that's the truth. So, uh, I appreciate 29, but 46 is real. So anyway, uh, you know, really, really grateful. Before I get into the message today, just a reminder, we have a, a, a family financial meeting right after the service at 1145. So if you're interested, you want to kind of hear uh, where we are, we just finished our independent audit, our annual independent audit that we do every year. And so um, we're going to just present and let you guys know where we are. We're going to take a look at what God has done last year and us becoming debt free, which, and which kind of show you how God accomplished that and did that. Um, but then also this is just about us realizing that God has, has a new season for us as a church. And the new season is to be everything he's called us to be and to reach as many people as we possibly can and to serve all of us together and reach the next generation. Amen? Amen. Come on, do you agree with that? Amen? All right, cool. That's great. So it'll be about 15, 20 minutes and really looking forward to doing that. And uh, our, our director of finance and then secretary treasurer of the board is going to be presenting that as well. So, all right, God bless you. Um, really excited about this series that we continue to lean into the parables of Jesus. And as you look and read the parables, uh, they, they are very, they can be very difficult at times because Jesus speaks very directly on certain topics. And he speaks about like taking things from people and giving them to other people that, that, that did something with their talents. He speaks about a manager returning and, and, and someone not taking care of the vineyard or they, or they killed the, man, the, the, the owner of the field, sent the son to go and speak to the servants and the servants killed that, that, uh, the, that son. And so there's all this stuff he speaks of and it can be really difficult at times. So as I lean in and just so you know my heart as a, as a teacher of, of the Bible, uh, you know, because I've been communicating for, for many years, had the great privilege of doing that, continuing to grow, continuing to become a better communicator of God's word. Uh, when I was younger, I used to always, after I would preach, I would, whether I was a youth pastor and whatever it may be, I ran all the stuff in my head, like, okay, all right, how did I do? How did I connect? Would, you know, was my, was my delivery okay? And did, they didn't laugh at that joke, so scratch that one, you know? And, and, and I would think through, go through all these things, and it, it was a lot of brain damage where you just, and the enemy gets in your head. But I, the Lord brought me to this one question of, of this, and he said, Jason, this is the one question you're to ask after you communicate God's word, my word. And it's this question, did you communicate God's word accurately, appropriately in the context which it was given? If the word is yes, nothing else matters. And so as we come to God's word, this is my heart as, as we do this. I don't want to add anything to nor take anything away. There's a verse in the Bible that says that's not a good thing to do. So I want to lean into this. And this, this passage, this parable today, if you don't understand the context of it, it comes on the heels of some disturbing news. So Jesus gives this parable of the persistent widow starting in Luke 18, but he gives it out of a response that was happening at the end of Luke 17. Now they added numbers and verses in the Bible so that we can say, hey, turn to Luke 18 and look at this verse. So they're not inspired. They're not a part of, uh, the apostle Paul didn't write, you know, verse one, verse two. That was just added just for, just for convenience for us to be able to move quicker around it. So this is one, one instance, one occasion where Jesus is sharing some things. And it's, and it's most biblical scholars believe what he's talking about at the end of chapter 17 is speaking about the judgment and the destruction that was coming to Jerusalem that took place in 70 AD. And he was speaking some things that were difficult and harsh and the hearers were like, wait a minute, this, is, this does not sound good. And, he's, and he leads up and he talks about different judgments that, that they would be familiar with. So he talks about the days of Noah and how the flood consumed and that was a part of judgment. He talks about how, how fire and sulfur rained down on Sodom and Gomorrah and how when Lot's wife looked back, she turned to a pillar of salt and she was lost. A, a side note. I'm going to tell a joke I don't think I've ever told in church. Do you know the last thing Lot said to his wife? Hey, babe, what's that over there? It's 
terrible, that's terrible. That's not my joke, I heard someone and so I just wanted, if you ever hear that, please know that's a bad joke, okay? So just wanna prepare you. But, but <laughs> and you can use that as well, you're welcome. So, uh, but this is, what, <laughs> this is what Jesus leads up to. I, sorry, I, got, I don't know why I told that joke, I'm really, I was trying hard. <laughs> But, but G, yes, I'm older, yeah, and maybe don't have all my faculties like I used to. So, but Jesus is setting up this parable by talking about these judgments. And then he goes on to talk about what is going to happen in Jerusalem. And so Jesus is sharing these things and they're hearing these things and they're like, this is not good. Like this is, this is not very pleasant. It's kind of like if Jesus was, was here and he was like, I'm just telling you of this destruction that's coming to Arvada, we'd be like, wait, 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 I have some questions here. And so he's sharing it. And so he feels the concern of the disciples, their apprehension about the future. And, and now they have more questions than answers. And because of this, Jesus shares this parable. And so he begins in Luke 18, and he says, one day, this is right after that, Jesus told his disciples a story to show that they should always pray and never give up. So this was that through these, these difficult times, through these, these difficult situations, through pain, through all of this, that there's going to be a desire to give up as there is in many of our lives as well, that we, when things aren't going great or things are bad, there's this, there's this tendency of like, well, is it worth it? And so he says that they should pray, always pray, never give up. And then he goes into the story. There's, there's a judge in a certain city, he said, who neither feared God nor cared about people. A widow of that city came to him repeatedly saying, give me justice in this dispute with my enemy. The judge ignored her for a while, but finally he said to himself, I don't fear God or care about people, but this woman is driving me crazy. I'm gonna keep reading. I'm going to see that she gets justice because she's wearing me out with constant requests. So the Lord said, learn a lesson from this unjust judge. I want you, this is the lesson. Even he rendered a just decision in the end. So don't you think God will surely give justice to his chosen people who cry out to him day and night? Will he keep putting them off? I tell you, he will grant justice to them quickly. But when the son of man returns, how many will he find on the earth who have faith? And this is this is Jesus letting them know some very difficult things is happening. And so he's encouraging them to not lose heart. Losing heart in difficult situations is something that we can all struggle with and, and we can all lean towards. And so Jesus says, hang on, do not give up. And now Jesus didn't say this, that I'll protect you from all trouble. I'll keep you from all trouble. He, he, he understands that what's coming is gonna be very difficult. And so in the midst of trouble, in the midst of pain, in the midst of unanswered questions, if we were to apply this in our own life when things are, 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 are our future is like, we don't know how it's gonna work out or we're going through some, something difficult, maybe even in the midst of our own failures and things that we cannot control, it's not easy. And it's easy to become discouraged. It's easy to, to be like, well, what's the point? What's the hope? But Jesus gives a very simple key here that I want you to catch and I want you to understand it, that there's, there's something here. If you don't notice it, you're, you're gonna miss it. And he talks about how is it that you overcome difficult situations? How is it that you overcome things that you're, you're concerned and worried about? How is it that you deal with, with maybe things in our nation that you're like, how is this happening? Or in a marriage or with your children or, or some tragedy of, of some sort. And this is the key. And Jesus gave us this key, and this is that prayer is the key to living an overcoming life. See, living an overcoming life is not the matter, uh, a, a matter of the circumstances, it's the position of the heart in the midst of those circumstances. And prayer is this something that for a lot of Christians, we believe it works, 
We know it works. We will not, we'll never say that doesn't work, but yet we, our belief doesn't align with our actions. We just don't pray. And Jesus said, I, I'm t- you need to always pray so that you don't give up. So prayer is this key that sustains you in your difficult times. So, because the truth is this, we live in a fallen, broken world. Like it does, you don't have to be a genius to know that there is brokenness. We're in a volatile world. Now, I believe in the victorious work of Jesus, that through his, his, his birth, his life, his death, his resurrection, he established a kingdom on this earth. And it's us as his church, it's our job to implement that kingship in areas of our, of our lives and areas of our world. Now, I believe in an advancing, an advancing kingdom of God. I don't believe in a shrinking one until he gets the king, God's kingdom, he gets so small and then Christ returns. No, no, we, we serve a victorious God that there is no realm on this earth in which Jesus is not king, amen? And so we need to understand this. So Jesus is saying, listen, it's gonna be tough, but listen, you've got to pray. You've got to to talk with God. You've got to understand you're part of a kingdom. And Jesus established his kingdom. Now the players in the kingdom are you and I. Filled by the power of God's spirit. We're the players. He ascended to heaven and said, now you bring forth my kingdom on the earth. And so this is, this is this understanding that we're still though gonna go through difficult times as God's kingdom is expanding. And so the truth is there's a lot of unknowns in our lives. Maybe some of you ran into unknowns this week. There's a lot of unknowns that you don't see coming. And in those unknowns, this is what happens. The enemy causes, causes fear, loss of hope, loss of worry. But God wants you to have hope. There are, there are difficult times that we're going to face. And difficult times doesn't mean you're outside of God's will. It just means it's time to pray more. And what if, what if the church actually believed this? What if, all of us know people who, who served God and they went through difficult times and then they fell away. Well, what was missing in their life was prayer. Because prayer is that key to overcoming difficult circumstances. And so Jesus didn't leave us without hope. He didn't leave us without without how do we grow and how do we overcome. He gave us this gift and it's the gift of prayer. This is why there's so much hindrance against prayer in your life. If you were to say, hey, I'm going to, I'm gonna set this time aside every day and I'm, I'm gonna pray. Now, you can pray as you walk, as you drive. I do it all the time. But if you're like, I'm going to do this, I promise you, you will be met with more opposition of that time period than you ever have before. I often say this, listen, if you want a free meal or free food to show up at your house, just enter into a three-day fast. On the first day, people are like, hey, I brought over a brisket. I thought you'd want to have it. <laughs> it's true. But this is God inviting us into this prayer life. And so I just wanna give some things of of why prayer works in the midst of difficult situations and what he was telling the disciples and how he was encouraging them. And number one, that God uses prayer to guide you in confusing times. There's nothing worse than confusing times. The truth is in the future, we're gonna have a lot of decisions to make about where, where we work, where we live, about for our children, things within the church. With, there are decisions that will need to be made. And there will be times that you, just, you don't know the perfect answer. And I would say this, I mean, life is a lot like the, the, the Cajun pastor I know from, from New Orleans, Louisiana. He said, listen, when you come to a fork in a road, you got to take it. So which way do you go? Because you got to take one. And so through prayer, this is where God engages us and where we face difficult situations on which pathway to take. But the other side is this, that through prayer, we are engaging our faith with with the goodness of who God is. And I believe that every decision that is anchored and rooted in 
faith where God, I've, I've been praying about this. I, I believe this is the right direction. We've got, yes, you gather data, you gather information, you go to the word, but you're like, but I still don't know which decision. Every decision you make for the purpose of honoring Christ through that decision, I, I believe with all my being, God will bless that decision. I believe that God will use that even if it's the wrong one to get you eventually back to this one, because it is faith that pleases God, not works, not action. So as you engage your faith, it still looks like something and you have to make a decision. And so God uses prayer when you are confused. And so we get confused because we're afraid. What if we make the wrong choice? And what if we don't have the answer? And the truth is we don't know the end from the beginning. So we can't make perfect decisions, but here's the beautiful thing. We serve a God who is the alpha and the omega. He knows the end from the beginning and he calls us to walk with him. But it's, but it's prayer, it's prayer that guides us. God uses to guide us during confusing times. It's relationship with him. And there's only one authority who, who knows all things and that is God. And he guides us and he's working on our behalf. He's completely reliable. He is our creator. And, and prayer keeps us in the pocket of the assurances of God's promises. It keeps us anchored to what we know to be true because there's so much noise going on and we can be confused and fearful and we can be paralyzed with indecision. And this is what we know that we serve a God that if we trust in him, as Proverbs 3 says, trust in the Lord with all your heart, lean not on your own understanding and in all your ways, submit to him and he will make your paths straight. The disciples were concerned and Jesus said, listen, I'm concerned for you too that you would give up or abandon my call and purpose in your life, but pray always. And this is what will keep you in the center and will guide you in confusing times. Number two, prayer helps you overcome the temptations in the midst of difficulties. Because when things are difficult, temptations come. You feel discouraged, you're, maybe your, your, mental, your mental state is not the greatest. And I would say this, there are two things that are your most vulnerable as Christians to temptation and to sin. One is difficult times. One is fear. One is like, I don't know what to do. And so we can fall into a trap. The other is great success. Great success tests the will and the heart of man. And it's in those, both those times that you will want to turn to be self-reliant. Because in, when you're at the bottom, when you're, when you're in the valley, you start thinking, well, apparently God doesn't see me. So I gotta figure this out on my own. And when you have great success, you're like, apparently I don't need God because I'm pretty successful. And that leads to temptation and leads to sin. But this idea that when things are, are confusing, when things are difficult, that you are in a valley, prayer helps you not doubt what God spoke to you on the mountaintop now that you're in the valley. Don't doubt what God spoke to you on the mountaintop while you're in the valley. Don't doubt what God spoke to you in the light now that you feel like you're in the darkness. Prayer keeps us connected and oriented to the heart of God. And one thing that will not change in your life, I promise you, regardless of your circumstances, is temptation. The temptation to trust yourself, to meet the needs in your life that only God can meet. That's really what sin is. Sin is trying to meet a need in your life that God designed for him to be the only one to meet it. That's really good. And so anytime you turn to, to meet your need outside of looking to the Lord, it's sin. But prayer allows us to overcome temptations when things are difficult. We know Jesus, Jesus was tempted in every way as a man. So we have an advocate that, Lord, I, I am going through a difficult time. I am tempted. But since you overcame it, I can overcome it. And prayer keeps us connected with, with him. This is what Jesus said, always pray and do not lose heart. Do not, do not lose hope. 
There's the scripture that says that hope deferred causes a heart to, 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 to be sick. And that when, when hope is deferred, it's, it, 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 you cast off restraint. You cast off what you know to be true. And this is what prayer does. It keeps you anchored. Listen, you can't control having negative thoughts. We can all have negative thoughts about the situation, about things we're going through, about fear, but what if? And for the disciples, what does that mean for us or my family? And you can have negative thoughts about people, about situations that may lead you to acting in the flesh. And when we're in that moment that we, we actually think God isn't good, we actually think that God, he doesn't see us. And what happens is when you start coming up with those belief systems about God or about what he's, his character and who he is, what you believe you become. What you believe, you start acting as though you believe it. That's why our belief system is so important that it's anchored to the word and it is cultivated through prayer. So this is what God is saying. Now, I, 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 I'll say this. You can't control what gets your attention, but you can control what keeps it. So in the area of temptation, you can't control what gets your attention, but you can control with what keeps it. And this is what prayer does. It helps us overcome these areas and diff when we're going through difficult circumstances, when you feel hopeless, when you feel hurting, when you feel broken, when you feel scared, when you feel like the future, you're, you're really, really worried, worried about it. What we need to do is start praying and bring our concerns to the Lord. We need to surrender ourselves to God. 1 Corinthians 10, 13 says, no temptation has overtaken you except what is common to mankind and God is faithful and he will let you be tempted beyond what you could bear. But when you are tempted, he will also provide a way out so that you can endure it. Prayer helps you discern the way out. A person's life who is, is, has a prayer for life is a life that, that you're, you're gonna see, they see the world differently. They see, they see problems differently, they see people differently because they have the perspective of God. They don't find, you don't find them losing heart. You can be discouraged, but losing heart is something way different. So when, when, you're, when you're tempted, when you're going through difficult times, you're tempted to doubt and you're full of fear and anxiety and maybe anger, you need to know, look, God is faithful. He will provide a way out. So I want you to remember that. If it's anxiety, God is faithful. He'll provide a way out. If it's, if it's anger, God is faithful. He'll provide a way out. And those moments of either success or, or great pain, these, these, a lot of the things that God delivered us from begin to come back into our lives. If it's, if it's lust, then God is faithful and provide a way out. If it's substance abuse, God is faithful and he will provide a way out. If it's materialism, God is faithful and he will provide a way out. God is faithful. And you, through prayer, are you, you're anchoring yourself to that truth. Our God is faithful. It's not about your work or your effort. It's about you recognizing God will provide a way out and meet me in this times of, of hurting or pain. Number three, prayer will steady you in trouble. Because when there's trouble, things feel un, uncertain. And temptation though, temptation is a storm on the inside. This trouble is about a storm on the outside. This is about, you get the phone call you never thought you would get. This is about, you, th this happens in your life or you lose your job or, or whatever may be happening. This is trouble on the outside. And prayer will steady you. Prayer will give you clarity. Some of the greatest, the most difficult times that we've had to walk through, decisions need to be made. It's easy to go, okay, we gotta figure this out. No, wait, let's pray first. And let's, let's invite God into the situation. When the COVID stuff all happened and, and it's like, oh, we're gonna do it, no, no, wait. All of the leadership team here says, we're gonna pray because this is Jesus's church and we're gonna do what he says. 
But that, that is, that is, that's just one situation that any situation you're facing, pray first. So we are going to have temptation. We're going to have trouble. But the truth is this, God is faithful and prayer is our key to living and overcoming life. So Jesus said this, he said, in the world, you will have trouble. That's it, that's, listen, people say, listen, you gotta focus on the promises of God. Well, that's one of them. <laughs> I promise. Because we live in a fallen, broken world. But we serve a faithful God. We live in a world that, listen, even, even in our own physical bodies, like none of us are escaping earth with this body. It's, it is part of the process. We see God's kingdom here and we see parts of it now, but not yet. So whatever your trouble may be, God is faithful and prayer will steady you there. The greatest thing you can do for expectations on this earth is to come to grips that earth is not heaven. Now we are to pray that God's kingdom would come on earth as it is in heaven. In other words, that's that, that's that commissioning of God. We're to actually believe it's possible. Jesus wouldn't tell us to pray something that he was like, I'm not gonna answer that prayer. There's something about us engaging in the, in the purposes of God on the earth. But the reality is this, we are still under areas of our, of our world are under the curse of sin. Now, Jesus died so that all could be saved, but the working of his purposes in our lives and our own bodies, listen, this, this, there is a sin aspect there that we, that's what we war against. But that's why we get new bodies. And I'm grateful for that, right? That's why the scripture teaches that. But we, we, are, we are a part of, of in trouble, understanding, having the right perspective. So yes, in heaven, there's no sorrow, there's no suffering, there's no sickness, there's no sadness, there's no trial, there's no tears. There's, there's nothing wrong in heaven. It's all great there, but we're on earth. And so we need to understand we're gonna face difficulties. And what do we do with them? This is Jesus telling them and telling us, I want you to pray so that you don't lose heart and give up. So this is so important. I want you just to listen to some of the things that are promises when we face difficulties. You, like be strong and courageous. Don't be frightened. Don't be dismayed for the Lord your God is with you. This means when you're facing difficulties, this is your promise. Also, Isaiah 41, it says, fear not for I'm with you. Do not be dismayed for I'm your God. I will strengthen you. I will help you. I will withhold, uphold you with my righteous hand. That's his promise. And we, we, we orient our minds and our hearts around this. Matthew 28, I'm with you always to the end of the age. First or second Thessalonians 3, 3, but the Lord is faithful. He will establish and guard you against the evil one. Amen. And, but we pray so that we don't lose heart. Your faith is precious. What, who, what your belief in your heart, it's precious and you need to protect it. And you protect it through prayer. You feed on the Lord's presence. You, you pray often and you'll find yourself steady, steady in troubled times. Number four, prayer keeps you focused on God's character. You must have a right understanding of who God is. He is a good God. That when you go through difficult trials and difficult things, when, when, when you think things that would never happen do happen, the things that you, you thought should happen don't happen, you can become discouraged. You can become doubtful. You can become hurting. You can become dismayed. Your heart can be broken. But I'm telling you, Jesus gave us this key and it's prayer. It's prayer. It's one of the things that we are really, really leaning into as we look to our vision for, for 2025 is, is that we want to be a people of prayer. That the house of God will be a house of prayer. Why? Listen, we all believe it works. 
So why don't we do it as much? It's just bringing even our families and praying for. This is a great opportunity. Jesus said, I wish that you would always pray. And, and by doing that, you focus on God is good. He is with me. He is faithful in this earth and the next through the work of Christ and the blood of Jesus. He saved me. He, he is healing me. And this whole sovereignty of God is something that I, I wrestle with often. I pray for people who have received healing from, from, from Jesus. I prayed for people and fought for them in, in the spirit for them and they didn't receive it. But what I do know because of the faithfulness and the knowledge of who Jesus is, both receive their healing. One went on to be with the Lord, and guess what? Healed perfectly. One received healing here, but it's temporary because all of us die because of the curse of sin on our flesh anyway. But what I do know is this, is that the character of God is good. His heart is good. His purposes for you are good. So when you're going through difficulties, you have, a, you have an option. Do I doubt the character of God or do I lean into the character of God? There's a, a passage that we all love, and it's Jeremiah 29, 11. But the context of it, most people don't catch. The children of Israel had been drug off into captivity, exile, they were slaves, they were going through horrific things. And so the heart of the people was like, God is not good. He has abandoned us. If he loved us, why would we be going through this? And they had made a judgment towards God. Oh, I see how this is, God. I see this. You're not good. And your plans aren't good. And you want to harm us. And they had made that judgment against God. And God, knowing their hearts, said, hey, hey, wait, wait a minute, wait a minute. You're telling me what my plans are for you? And he says, let, let, let me clear something up. You wait a minute. Let me clear something up. I'm the one that makes the plans for your life. And so in their valley, in their darkness, in their pain, he says this to the prophet Jeremiah, I know the plans I have for you, not you. Plans to prosper you, not to harm you, to give, plans to give you hope in the future. And you will call on me and come and pray to me and I will listen, you will seek and find me. You will seek me when you seek me with your whole heart. He was writing their wrong mindset and prayer keeps your mind connected to the character of God. And as we pray, he says, no, hang on a minute. As we embrace the work of Christ in our life, he, he took us and he brought us into his kingdom and by his stripes we are healed and we trust you. But in the midst of this, even when you, when, even when you just, you don't even know what to think, prayer is what anchors you to the character of God. I wanna draw your attention to a video of a young woman who faced something very difficult. And I want you to hear her heart. And I want you to hear how God steadied her in a troubled time. Let's take a look at the video. I was going to sing a song on a Sunday morning and my mother-in-law was my vocal coach at the time, which was so fun. We were singing, thank you Jesus for the blood, that's what I was practicing. And as I was singing, I felt something move across the bone or muscle in my neck. Went to my doctor and after a bunch of appointments, they told me I definitely had cancer. We didn't know what kind. And a few months later, we found out it was stage three Hodgkin's lymphoma. In that moment, we were both so shocked. We genuinely had no idea that was what was gonna happen. I didn't have any symptoms of having cancer. I wasn't tired or anything. Realizing what our future would become became extremely overwhelming all at once. <laughs> and I remember we were walking to the car and I, just start crying and my dad came over to me and just hugged me. It doesn't matter what I walked through, God was going to be there and God was going to be faithful and God's always good despite what you go through. 
Through this process, I learned how important community is. The moment that we found out that I was diagnosed, I was still on the worship team here at Faith. And all of the ladies on the team like put together these baskets for me and one of them started a meal train here. And just the love and support is, you just need community, you just do. I grew in my ability to be vulnerable in sharing that those hard things don't stop God from loving you or stop you from loving God. And it comes back to that song that I was singing when I was first diagnosed. And it's, thank you, Jesus, for the blood applied. Thank you, Jesus, you have saved my life. And that is truly all that matters. It's all that matters. In the bridge of that song, it says, there's nothing stronger than the working power of the blood. And really early on, that was something that everybody was praying over me, that by his stripes that I would be healed. And we all believed it and we all wanted that. And at the same time, knowing even if I wasn't healed of cancer now, the blood of Jesus is enough for every situation. It's enough for every hardship you face. I knew the outcome regardless of what happened. I could be healed by God or I would be with God forever. So at the end of the day, it's that simple truth that Jesus died for me and he saved me and he's healed me and I will be with him forever. So my name is Robbie Mandeville and I'm a cancer survivor. But I just sense that God today wants us to lift our eyes fresh and new again to his character, to lift our eyes again to what we know him to be, but let's put our faith in that fresh and new again that God is able and to sustain us that and we won't lose heart. We won't give up because we are going to find ourselves standing into the, in the throne room of grace, coming boldly to him because of the work of Christ and the blood of Jesus. So wherever you are today, find hope in the goodness of God. Wherever you are, find healing, however God chooses to do that in your life. There's some of you who have walked through so much pain, it was, it was something that you could hardly even bear. And you have just, you've, you've stopped there for a long time in your life. A disappointment of your children, you've doubted God, you've stopped praying for them. There have been things that you've just given up and I encourage you today through this testimony and the Word of God, don't quit and keep praying. Amen? Amen. And so I just would like for us just for a moment, just to close your eyes for a moment. Holy Spirit, we invite you here to evaluate the areas that maybe we have just given up hope, the areas that we've just written things off because we prayed and nothing seemed to happen and we just quit. Lord, the truth is you have never left us. There's no place we can go that is away from your presence. You're in the valley, you're on the mountaintop. But Lord, I just want to pray a prayer of repentance. Lord, that we have fallen into doubt. We have actually made a judgment towards you that, well, this is God's plans. And Lord, may you today declare, I know the plans I have for you, not you. Plans to prosper you, not to harm you. Plans to give you hope and a future, and that if we will seek you with our hearts, we will find you, and really, Lord, we will find that fresh hope again. 
So Lord, may we leave here today with the fresh expectancy that prayer works and that you're inviting us to a very new special place that we would pray often, that we would always approach life with this filter of God, let's pray first. And that Lord, that we would not fall away and that Lord, as we're praying for ourselves, we would never quit on praying for those who are in need and around us. So Holy Spirit, may you use this place to be a house of prayer, that we see the incredible hand and move of God. And Lord, even just here for a moment, I ask you that you would heal people's disappointments. God, expectations that weren't met, marriages that broke up, diagnoses that were given, financial ruin that people are embarrassed of, failures that we've made and we've found ourselves that failure being our identity. And so we just have given up. Lord, today we make the decision, I'm getting back on the road and I'm not gonna quit and I'm gonna find steadiness in trouble. I'm going to find your character in this situation. I'm going to find peace in the midst of this trouble. And so, Lord, we celebrate your goodness today and your character. In Jesus' name, amen.